they're going to be OR codes facing out the sun. It will fade. They're more light cast than these, which tend to be extremely, color, extremely color fugitive. Color fugitive means that within six months, the colors will have drastically changed from the colors you put down. Yeah. Um, like the one, you see that brightly colored pink Lolita explosion thing? That you can only achieve those kind of things and those kind of blues with concentrated watercolors. I wish I brought it because it is dramatically color shifted in the year and a half since I've done it. And it, it hasn't, even if you store it in an archival lightproof box, the colors will shift. Now, if you're like us and you do a lot of your work freelance and you can email it to people, you email a copy to them rather than sending them the original, that's fine. It doesn't matter because um, they're never going to see how much the colors shifted on the original. But if you're doing commissioned work, I recommend against using these pigments unless the person commissioning is made aware that they may not be able to display the piece in their house. That being said, I think they're really fun. You can do some different effects for them. Oh, sorry, go ahead. What's on? So what exactly does light fast mean? Light fast means um, it's how the sunlight degrades the colors. And um, if you've ever, yeah, if you've ever seen a picture that's been out in the sun and like all the reds are gone, yeah. that's because of well, like construction paper. paper. Remember when you were kids and you tried to put leaves on construction paper, and leave it in the sun, and where the leaves were, it was still dark. That's kind yeah. of what color fast is. The paper around it was not color fast. Yeah, or light fast. And uh, generally, professional paints are going to be more light fast. That's the brands we recommended are going to have good light fast. These just aren't because of the artificial dyes. It also says on the tube the degree of light fastness, mm -hmm. so you should check that. Reds are going to be the most problematic there. Oh, hues are also very problematic. They are. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, also, uh, color swatching is important. Um, what it looks like in the pan may not be what it looks like when you mix it. It may not be what it looks like when it's been applied and dried. All you really need is a small notebook, like a watercolor notebook, and you just swatch colors as you get them, and you write down the brand, and you write down the name, and that way you can refer to it and you know which brands work well for what colors. It also helps because not every brand is going to have the same color of Van Dyke Brown is one that I've seen either from, it's a dark brown, kind of grayish brown. I've seen either from very yellow to very red to even almost purpley. I have two Van Dyke Browns. Yeah. Which they are very fluffy. They look kind of like uh, blush makeup brushes. Those are for, uh, 
applying um, large expanses of water or color to the paper. I use them for stretching and I use them for applying washes. Um, flats are good for filling in large areas of detail very quickly. Rounds are good for um, filling in smaller, tighter areas or drawing in details. And we'll have all these up here. Don't start with that. Don't 
then I'll pull, you know, what I like and use it for the final watercolor. Um, we've got a couple different techniques, and I think we're going to go ahead and start demoing for you guys. And um, even if you guys want to come up, because we'll have like a... I wish we had a table, but we don't. So I encourage you guys to come up and watch. I'll work on the floor. Oh, ATC? Yes. Oh my gosh, sorry, sorry. Um, honestly, I'm really cheap and lame about it. I just take them 
and down to the board. Like, um, I actually have examples on my phone, but I don't have my phone with me. I've even worked with ITCs. I actually, you can fit, I think, six of them on a sheet this size. I paint them all on this and then cut them out. So, with this paper, to make it, I mean, this paper, to make it even lower tack, I put it on my arm where there isn't hair.
talk much about um, the kind of hair. It's on the, the, the handout, um, the kind of fibers that you get in brushes. We talked about the shapes. Uh, there's a couple different fibers. You'll get um, synthetic uh, Kalinsky hair, uh, semi-synthetic, which is a blend of Kalinsky, sable, and um, synthetic materials. Like Teflon, right? Teflon, yeah. Um, and then you'll get other natural materials. Goat hair is really stiff. Hey, um, squirrel hair is really soft and he ain't using it. Um, I do like the sable hairs the best because they're very springy and that's usually what the synthetics try to, um, to emulate, but it bounces up real nice. I'm going to be trashy to use that one. Go for it. because I'll have like three watercolors spread out before me because I'm ADHD and very impatient and I'll try to go back to it before I finish drawing. So um, this picture has my character Kara holding a small sapling and so I'm thinking like green and spring and sunlight so the wash I'm applying reflects that. It's a nice lemony yellow and um, it's actually a little too strong so I'm going to go ahead and dilute it while it's still wet. Do that in Louisiana, not in Ohio. Oh, no. <laughs> One of the ways to do washes. Um, that's really bad for doing shading or exact areas, but it's great. 
if you want to just let the paint flow. Basically, big watercolory effect. Wet, wet into wet is great for. Um, this is I'm gonna turn it on. Wet to wet is great for when you're basically laying things out, kind of roughing stuff in. Uh, dry into wet, you can pull more details, but it's not going to be perfect and or exact. And dry under dry is like good for hair or eyelashes. Yeah, um, very fine details and eyes, very fine details. Um, wet into wet is when you can pull in different colors and blend them really well because everything is wet, everything starts moving around, um, and because I'm kidding, it's, 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 yeah, it's muddy real fast though. So you usually want to use light colors, um, some red, and use some orange. And it just kind of spreads out, gives you cool effects that just, it's a very happen, very um, happy accident. Happy accident.